The only talk show for AFC Bournemouth. Bournemouth. This is Cherry Chat with Chuck and Josh. Oh, that's the old jingle there, <laughs> Chuck. Yeah, no, no Chuck anymore. Um, this is Cherry Chat on Nerve Radio. I'm Joshua Coase. I'm joined by Stephen Wright and John Nagioff just got in the studio. Just about there. Just about. How are we? How are we both? All good. Very well. Yeah. Good to be back for the for the new season. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. A lot's happened. A lot's happened. So coming up today on the show, we're going to discuss September. Look back on the uh, season we had so far, and also going to look against our match against Leicester City, which was nil nil last weekend. We've got to discuss under 21s who were in Premier League Cup action last week. Callum Wilson's return. Cherry's players in international duty. And we'll also look ahead to our match against Tottenham Hotspur next Saturday. Yep, plenty to, plenty to get through. Absolutely. So how would you sum up our last month in the Premier League campaign and, and the Cup and things? Um, it's been a difficult start. Uh, starting from the summer, bringing in like Jermaine Defoe, we're thinking we'd get off to quite a quick start, but it's been anything that. But it's been quite a tough start in terms of the fixtures we've had. We've had Man City, we've had Arsenal. It's not really been an easy start, but it's looking a bit precarious at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I think I think we would all agree that it was a good summer. There was it wasn't just good good business, but it was done early as well. Got done so early, yeah. didn't we? Of course, yeah. You know, of course, we brought in Asmi Begovic, Nathan Ake, and yeah. Jermaine Defoe all in. Give him time to gel in the pre-season training and. Um, Undoubtedly, this squad was strengthened. There weren't really any uh, outgoings that to, to worry about, um, but hasn't hasn't gone the way that the manager and the team and fans would have hoped at the moment. Obviously, aside from the two victories over Brighton, which weren't massively convincing, uh, by the way, in the in the cup and in the league, uh, it's been a pretty difficult month in in September. Yeah, so we started out in September against Arsenal. That didn't go according to plan at all. No. Got the crucial victory in the Premier League on the Friday night against Brighton. It could see if Jordan and I really just about, yeah. turned that match around for us. It was, a, it was a great end to the game with Defoe finally scoring. The grandstand finish, yeah, oh, yeah. yes, we'd like to see. And then, of course, the cup game, which I was at as well, um, that was quite a drawn out affair. That was mm. not the best quality. It was all, all about the win in that, though. Just yeah, for a bit Josh of King came on off, off the bench and scored an extra time, but it was, it was not the best of games to watch. And then, of course, conference is up. <coughs> we go to Goodison Park, Everton, play quite well, take the lead. And then end up on the losing side because Niaz has two goals. We're a bit unlucky on that day. Yeah. And then, of course, we'll look at we'll discuss later, obviously, more in detail. But obviously, the frustrating nil-nil draw for Leicester at home last week. We're also going to be joined today by Akshay, who just went to the game his last way week. Through. He's just about to come in the studio now. <laughs> I, I th- thought I thought I was late this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think the most frustrating thing this season has been that. Bournemouth have had just just to watch Bournemouth has been to see a team that has had a lot of the ball, a lot of possession, and been unable to really do much with it. Not create a whole lot of chances, um, and yeah. particularly in the games against Brighton, the first half was just <coughs> excuse me, just really frustrating to watch. Um, just can't give the ball to Defoe and King. It seems to be a lack of players willing to take on shots is what's frustrating me in that game a lot. Yeah. Defoe was anyone willing to have a go. There's a lot of passing around the final third, around out on the out edge of the area. No one's read. Really Taking the ball by the horse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's why when Jordan Ibe came on in that game against Brighton, it was a great substitution straight away. He was trying to do some new things, yeah. and I think J- Jordan Ibe is often most effective as a substitute, one of those off yeah. the bench players. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Sermon's equaliser in that game actually has been included in the nominations for the Premier League Goal of the Month. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get the, the get a win, get the no. vote on that. No, but it it's, didn't. It's still on a very nice goal. It's good. It's good back heel from I and yeah, we'll see but how. It like goes. that piece of play, especially with the Defoe goal after, it just shows what we can do. Yeah, we've just not been showing it like in the games previously to that. Uh, obviously, I was at the Watford game. And we were very poor that day, but since then, I think we have showed a few signs of improvement. Obviously, it's going to take Defoe and the new players a bit of time to settle in, but we've been a lot better since then. So it can yeah. only be upwards. Speaking of Jordan Ibe, he's been voted by the fans as the player of the month on Twitter. Would we agree with that based on what we've seen? It's probably fair. I think it probably the best of a bad bunch, I think, in, in September. I mean, he was he was the game changer against Brighton and he also got a man match in the cup game as well. Um, yeah, particularly with, with him and I think in that game, Ryan Fraser was actually playing right back and Fraser overlapping Ibe and vice versa looked really good actually. It was something we hadn't really seen before. And I also thought he was quite good when he came on near the end against Leicester last weekend. I think had he been on earlier, he might have been able to get something from the game. He was very influential again. Then. Yeah, it is just about consistency because he's always been the player that stands out in games that aren't very important, like particularly pre-season games or maybe yeah. domestic cup games. So it's just about doing it when it matters, really. Yeah, I watched him against Leicester. Apologies for my late entry. <laughs> Welcome, might, actually. Bournemouth might have a decent football team, but terrible public services. But anyway, <laughs> um, yes, I was pretty good against Leicester, but I, I agree with Steve. It's been a 
created so many chances like chance after chance i was i was maintaining the twitter feed for the game and i the amount of times i typed in all caps chance chance i was <laughs> sick and tired like it was it's amazing and uh, yeah i think even uh, after the match when eddie howe was at his conference he he was a frustrated man and i don't blame him at all it it's really really poor and but they're encouraging signs so hopefully they can build on those you can guarantee goals with Jermaine Defoe and I don't some people would even suggesting that he's passed it but I don't think he's passed it he's, he's Definitely been scoring not. goals in an awful Sunderland side there's no reason he shouldn't the be the goal able against to. Brighton as well just showed like he's yeah, so clinical put him in the right place yeah but I think with Defoe it's going to be more we've just got to get the service into him and it's just yeah. I don't know why it hasn't sort of happened at the moment I don't know if he's not making the correct runs or it's just not coming from the midfield he didn't get much of a pre-season for, for whatever reason because like we say we made the signings early but most of the pre-season games I think Eddie Howe was testing out a Phobie and Moose yeah. set together even maybe. at the beginning of the season he didn't start the Phobie yeah, yeah. he's only really just come in the last few weeks yeah it would have been nice maybe to have them all playing together a bit sooner but. Mm. let's get Eddie Howe's thoughts now let's hear from him on how he thought the game went really I mean I thought we started really well um, and we did well to maintain that really throughout most of the game um, create a number of clear cut chances on another day I think we we score we score a few. Um, very pleased with the team's performance, very team pleased with the, the team's defensive shape, which I think first clean sheet of the season is a big moment for us. So I have to cling to those those positives, but we're desperately disappointed not to win. You know, that's the beauty of football, even though you're dominant, you've got to when you get those chances, you've got to take them and, and then the challenge for us today was as everyone went by, you've got to make sure you don't concede at the other end and with players like Jamie Vardy and, and Mares, you worry that one moment of quality from them can swing it their way. So I thought we did that really well and the set play threat they've got with the long throw we dealt with that well so that's why I don't think it's doom and gloom for us I think it's a positive day a very good performance and if we continue to hit those levels we'll be we'll be fine Cherry Chat on Nerve FM So that's what Eddie Howe had to say about the game I think it's a pretty honest assessment it's a pretty fair assessment how would you rate his performance as a manager over the course of the season so far I think he's trying to something he's been talking about is trying to stick to his principles just obviously it's been a quite a run of negative results but that doesn't mean he's going to change the way that he wants the team to play mm-hmm. um, I don't know it's, do you think he's maybe been making substitutions too late or what, what's he been getting wrong or is it the players um, it's, it's, I think it's a bit down to the players as well especially against the, the big teams um, he continued to stick uh, I watched the last game and that was Lewis Cook's debut and uh, I think it was kind of an enforced change because Harry Arta was out. And I think he would have started if he wasn't. So I think it's down <coughs> to individuals as much as down to the manager. His team selection, I mean, Arta has been a decent performer ever since he's signed for Bournemouth. So it's not like he's a bad player. But sticking with him, uh, especially in the Arsenal game, the I think even though the scoreline might not affect it, I think Arsenal, I mean, Bournemouth's best, worst performance by far. Sermon and Arta were clueless. They were giving it e- easily away to the pressing of Arsenal. And so against Leicester, Lewis Cook was absolutely dominant. He, he was kept Bournemouth ticking, moved up the pitch, made great passes, created a number of chances, good shots as well. So I question whether... I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad manager because as the Leicester game proved, if they'd taken any one of those multiple chances, they would have won. I think his dogged... As you say, his dogged faith in his tactics might if he doesn't change them at all it might prove to be his undoing but obviously we can't say yet um, I've been very impressed with Lewis Cook um, he was played a brilliant part in the last home game of last season against Burnley got the assist for the winning goal and obviously then he went off with the England in the 20s and won the World Cup and he's not had as much game time as I'd like to have seen him get since then at the start of this season but hopefully now he managed to f- obviously he played in the st- from the start against Brighton in the Cup and he played against Leicester I'm hoping he'll start more games in the future I thought uh, in, against Brighton in the Cup he was probably one of our standout players he really sort of got into the game and we weren't exactly playing the best Brighton team there was no, <clears throat> but that that in itself we brought in a few youngsters and it sort of it just freshened it up a bit more so maybe it's you know time to sort of embed a few more sort of different players just not the same sort of tactics and players every single game <laughs> And actually, did you ask questions, Eddie Howe, about Lewis Cook? Yes. Uh, my, so my question was, how do you think... Well, we actually, we've actually got it here, actually. I think we're going to... Might as well give it a listen to it now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Lewis Cook's performance in his first start? Very good. Very good. Um, you know, Lewis is unique to the other midfielders that we have. Um, 
passes the ball very well, very composed. But defensively today, I thought he was excellent. His, his energy levels were very strong. So it's been a really good day for him. And I thought he, um, you know, he complimented Andrew Sermon very well. I thought they worked well as a pair today. Cherry Chat on Nerve FM. So that's what how do you have to say about Lewis Cook I think he echoes what we said basically and hopefully he will play him in he, he's been future. leagues ahead of I think everyone particularly the midfield I think he's the kind of player that you would have liked Jack Wilshere to be like when he came last season mm-hmm. um, just great at spraying the ball across the pitch and dribbling with it as well some of his, his moves that's definitely one of the areas where fans are a bit disappointed suggesting that maybe Eddie Howe has been a bit too stubborn with, with not playing Lewis Cook instead opting for the players that he sort of has long term history with like Arter and Sermon yeah. and Gosling as well who've not done nearly as much I think as, as Lewis Cook this season who could probably play, play at a high level at this rate future England player perhaps I think well from what we saw last night then it's not going to be very difficult <laughs> because mm. genuinely England don't have enough creativity in the midfield Yeah. so like you look at like what Bournemouth have had Jack Wilshire, Lewis Cook, it's the type of player we need. Yeah. Because it's a lot of English just sideways, sideways, backwards. These sort of more like uh, attacking wise. I think uh, young players should have reason to be quite optimistic about the uh, potential for playing for England. At least, I mean, a lot of people say Gareth Southgate's not been a very inspiring manager, but I think he has given a lot of faith to some players who have, young players who have put in some good form in the Premier League, like Michael Keane and suggestions that Tarkovsky from Burnley could be did, in there as did well did Defoe come on last night he didn't know he would have been the first Bournemouth player ever to do so that's yeah, your stat that I've just yeah. knocked <laughs> going to reveal that but apologies not. no he didn't come on no. um, we'll talk about the um, international break and players who played um, yeah. a bit later on um, obviously a big talking point in that Leicester game was the handball decision I yes. mean it's as blatant as one you're ever going to see isn't it mm-hmm. Danny Simpson yep uh, from where I was seeing it was pretty clear and uh, a lot of the Bournemouth faithful were pretty vocal as well uh, there is an argument to be made that uh, the Leicester the referee Graham Scott was unsighted but I mean I was I was in the stands and I could see it and his hand was up and I think yeah. uh, Sh- Shakespeare made the argument afterwards that his hand didn't have much movement in it but for me it is clear as day because it struck, strikes from the he, ha- he moves his hand towards it and if his hand's not there then it's, it's going to go past him it's, never, it's going to go in it's, exactly it's and uh, uh, Mark Pugh has enjoyed himself against Leicester he scored the winner last season I was very and, impressed with him yeah. yeah and he I, I think he was the most one of the most dynamic players apart from Cook so it, it, I think it wasn't his day I mean it, it just wasn't destined sort of, I guess. it's sort of the lot you get when you're doing well but when we're in like yeah. this position we're not going to get it but do, do you think though actually that Jermaine Defoe should have scored the chance that obviously led to that handball when he, when he hit the bar I think he could have put that in he was sliding in desperately but uh, it, it, was the, it was the first chance of the game really two minutes in yeah. and yeah finished it with quality when it, it struck the bar I was, I was almost off my seat but uh, <laughs> it was I was yeah. surprised he missed it because I thought it was going to be goal bound and yeah um, he, he played well no doubt he dropped deep to get the ball sometimes when he felt he wasn't getting service and he, he was pretty dynamic in his movement but again it's I felt that they, they weren't giving him the ball enough they, uh, Joshua King was making a lot of runs and he was drawing fouls and he was like stretching the play but Defoe was just static in the centre and yes I know he's he's the kind of player who can punish you if given the chance but not giving him the chance because they're pl- playing it into other players so that's another facet of house tactics that maybe he needs to look into Defoe's never going to track back back across the entire pitch like you sometimes see Josh King doing to win the ball back if he's if he's just lost it you know yeah. he is quite a sort of stationary forward but yeah get him in the right positions and get the right service to him should see more goals hopefully this is what Eddie Howe to say about the handball decision I didn't see it at the time you know it was on the opposite side of the pitch from me so um, the only thing I see Mark Hughes reaction and knowing the, the player as I do that gave me a, a sign that there was something amiss but um, when you see it again and it's only when you see it again slow down that you see it, it's a clear cut penalty but you know that's not the reason we didn't win today it's very much in our our, our hands and we, we didn't take those moments and those chances when they came so that's why we didn't win Are you concerned by our um, Bournemouth lack of correct taking their chances at the moment? Um, I think it's a quite concerning because the game against Leicester you've think we could that's the type of game we should be winning because mm-hmm. the games against Arsenal Man City they're tough games but there's been games you know early on in the season that we just haven't taken our chances even against Brighton in the league it took us quite a while we didn't I didn't really see us coming back to win that I mean credit to the team for yeah. coming back and scoring two quick goals um, but yes yeah, it's, it's it's got to change really it just doesn't seem to be enough movement I mean we'll, we'll talk about a phobia and the 3-2 win in, earlier in the week uh, later on but 
a phobia in the game against Brighton in that cup win. He's just he's so again yeah. stationary up front that you can see the gap that he could run into but and some has got through, quite a lot of faith in the phobia. He has, which yeah. I think it's a bit worrying because I don't think he's good enough. We're going to take a quick break now, and then we'll come back and we shall talk about the AFCB Under 21s in action in the Premier League Cup in midweek. The only talk show for AFC Bournemouth. This is Cherry Chat. Welcome back to the show. So we're going to <clears> talk now about the AFC Bournemouth Under 21 side. They were in action in the Premier League Cup in midweek. We didn't get in the competition last year, but this year a new format for competition is it's like 32 teams are involved. It's like Champions League style, so there's obviously group stages first. So we're in a group with Norwich City. Berry and Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's quite a, quite a clever way to do this competition. I think it's going to be good. More and then, then we'll go to knockouts afterwards. Yeah, because yeah, the fixtures in the groups are played between now and February, and then we go into knockouts afterwards. So it'll be like last sixteen, quarter final, etc. Hmm. So yeah, we so we played Norwich City on on Wednesday, um, Tuesday night. I should say was it, no Wednesday night. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. It was Wednesday night. Yeah, I, I should remember. I was there. But, yeah, <laughs> and uh, FC Bournemouth won three two against Norwich City. Um, Benicophobia got a hat trick. Why he was playing in the team, I'm not really sure. You're, you're allowed to field three players over the age of 23 in the side. Right. And obviously, Callum Wilson made his long way of return from injury as well. We'll talk about it in a minute. Who was the other one over 23? We didn't play anyone else. Oh, okay. just, yeah, he, it's up to Carl Fletcher's decision that he's played Wilson and Fabi up top. So I felt a bit sorry for the Norwich boys having to cope with those two strikers up top. And they didn't do a great job of it, I must say. But yeah, Fabi got the first goal in the 38th minute. I mean, it was quite a, a tight second half at the start, but we definitely deserve to be in the lead still. Uh, Tristan Abrahams, the Norwich number nine, got had one chance and took it, slotted it home from close range to get a level. About two minutes later, Ben is in again one one with the goalkeeper and he slots it past him to make it two one. And then straight after that, Tristan Abrahams got a second goal. It, it, Norwich had like two clear cut chances and then that guy scored both. Fair play to him. And then the eighty eighth minute, a Phoebe got the winner for us. Um, and then the substitute, Mikhail and Jolly looked quite good when he came on he got in behind twice but he fluffed his lines when he got through one-on-one with the goalkeeper so yeah that had been the icing on the cake at the end of the game but he put his shot well high and well wide in the last minute of the game but a good start for Carl Fletcher's side and yeah yeah Phoebe did uh, take his goals well I think I've just watched them the first goal um, he's in acres of space the kind of space that you wouldn't get in the Premier League from Premier League defenders but to be fair his second and third goal I think looked a little bit more difficult and they were quite good finishes getting around a few the third goal where he had to sort his feet out and get a few, a few defenders who come in and then take cool and then he sort of went it around, around yeah. the goalkeeper as well I guess if he, d- he wasn't called up on um, international duty I mean I don't know if the Democratic Republic of Congo had a game this week but um, I, was Benic- thinking, I was wondering why it was him playing rather than Lise Mousset but I realised that Lise Mousset was on under 20, France under 21's duty oh, I so. see he did he did yeah we'll come to that I'm not sure why he was playing though still not sure yeah but, well if you're um, Carl Fletcher you might as well use the best players that are available to him given the best chance to get through to the next round but surely yeah. surely helpful for the senior side if a phobie's getting a few goals mm. a bit more confidence I was going to say where do you th- oh, in, terms of, in terms of our struggles at our club where do you rank a phobie at this moment in time probably third choice behind King and Defoe for me yeah. okay I would rate him uh, behind Wilson as well because when Wilson's in like when he's not injured which is quite rare in the Premier League but when he's not injured he can be pretty lethal as we saw in Burma's first season so I would rate him yeah, well. now that Wilson's back I agree he'll be the fourth choice yeah. I mean but, um, Afobi is good sort of at dribbling but he just doesn't really seem to have an end product no, he had, he had a chance to really like shine in the cup game against Brighton yeah. and was poor and so yeah. was Mousset to be fair they both had a great chance to make Eddie Howe think about you know getting him in the first team for the Premier League but Fobi's still been getting chances in, in, the, in the first team as well mm. but it's not quite worked out for him so far but hopefully this hat trick now will spur him on to score some goals he, did, he, did, he didn't do too badly towards the end of last season when he was playing with King up front yeah, yeah, yeah. so maybe those two together instead of Defoe but it's just Defoe's sort of more a certainty that he's going to score rather than a phobia yeah. that's the problem yeah. the amount of clear cut chances that a phobia and, and Mousset considering you're a striker it's your job to score goals it's a bit embarrassing considering the amount that they um, that they that sort game, of smash yeah. over the bar it'd be interesting to see Wilson coming back from injury as he lost a yard of pace or is he still going to have the quality he very, from very quick, the championship he did yeah. look really really sharp um, he, was, he was saying in an interview afterwards that he thought he rushed back from injury last time and this yeah. time he's taken a lot more time in rehabilitation and there's no pain at all now which is great he seems to be back to his full fitness and he, he did look incredibly sharp getting in behind the defence he had two good chances in the first half to get a goal but they were saved both times and then he did score just before he came off but he was offside when he chipped the goalkeeper the crowd was still cheered and loved it and then he was substituted down for 65 minutes but it's good to get that game time under his belt mm. 
he is targeting being in the first team squad for Spurs but I'm not sure that's going to be a bit too soon for that but we'll have to wait and see it be interesting to see how quickly sort of Eddie, Eddie Howe reintegrates him because yeah. it was quite a long injury six months I think well, yeah, it was two injury. injuries wasn't it yeah, really two yeah. four was I think a year yeah so. he hasn't really played much over the three Premier League seasons now if you think about no. it no oh. So we hopefully, he's saying that he's back, gives us more options, but I don't know how long it will take him to break in ahead of Defoe and King, but we'll have to see. But it was a good win for Carl Fletcher's side. They're next in action at home on Tuesday the 31st of October at 1pm at home against Berry. And Berry are playing Wolves on Monday night in their other fixture in the Cup. I quite fancy our chances of getting through this group. Bournemouth, yeah. Should yeah. be able I mean, to get When you look at the other teams who are in the group stages, I thought Norwich were going to be our toughest fixture anyway. We also, yeah. We've got to pay him away still. But I mean, yeah. maybe Wilson will feature a bit more in this competition, so which I think will help him, and he's bound to score a few goals. In I'm this. glad we're involved in it, to be honest. It's going to be good fun to be involved yeah, in Yeah, and it is a good opportunity for players like Wilson. It's quite a typical thing for um, Danny Ings plays a lot for the sort of Liverpool under-21s, a player recovering from injury. What are you giving me that smirk for? <laughs> Great player. Akshay's... I'm shot, I'm shot. That tickled Akshay for some reason, but <laughs> yeah, no, a good opportunity for, for Wilson and um, what, what other kind of teams are in this tournament? Do you know, in some of the other groups, could Bournemouth stand any chance of win, sure winning the whole thing? I'm not sure. look at it. Yeah, I'll have a look at that in a second, mm. and then we'll see what how we how far we can go really. But I thought Norwich is going to be our toughest opposition in this group. Wolves could be quite tough. Like, they're yeah. a good academy. Um, also, we've got to go to all these places away from home as well after Christmas. I think the last group game is in February at home to to Berry uh, to um, Wolves. Just yeah, so. there were a thousand fans I think at the Vitality. So yeah, the main stand was very full. Yep, very cheap packed tickets. Out. Good to see. Yeah, and make sure you go down if you're around at one o'clock in the afternoon on Halloween. Make sure you go down to watch them again against Berry. Um, right back Charlie Seaman was very impressive. He is really good at getting forward. Defenders will be a little bit susceptible at times. He played a one dodgy back pass, but it's a bit, he runs a bit like Adam Smith. Great going yeah. forward and a bit set to at the back. But you can't really there. compare though. Obviously, you don't really know until they're against Premier League opposition no, exactly. if they can yeah. replicate that. But, but um, and Emerson Hyman, who's had a few, a few first team um, minutes, he came yeah. on in the cup and stuff. He was very good. He reminds me sort of like a Lewis Cook type of player. He can pick a pass out and um, cut through the opposition. We were very impressive from um, playing out from the back. The centre halves are very keen to get for, get it to play the balls to the strikers as soon as possible, which is. Like was was really harming. Did um, Aaron Ramsdale get a chance in goal, or was it? He was actually nice. on international duty. Oh yeah, with, so with England under twenties, mm. so he wasn't playing in goal. No, so but I imagine he would have done otherwise. But he'll he'll get his chance. I imagine he'll probably feature against Berry. You'd, you'd imagine so anyway. Yeah. But no, it's a good competition to be involved in. It's exciting times, really. Oh, uh, talking of international break, um, Josh King scored twice <coughs> against San Marino in an eight 0 win for Norway. Oof. So it's good to see him back in form. Obviously, he scored against Brighton, he scored against Everton, two mm. goals now, international duty. It's a perfect game against San Marino, isn't it? Mm. If you want to score a few goals. We can't read too much into it, really, given <laughs> it is against San Marino. No, and no. For, uh, Norway can't even qualify for the World they Cup. Can't, no, that's they're it. nine points behind Northern Ireland. Um, so it's just a bit of a run out for them. He's scored a penalty on 14 minutes and then scored three minutes later. But it's good to see him b still scoring. I mean,. He's trying to get the form now back from last season. It took him a while, but now he has got those two goals from the first team for Bournemouth, and now these two goals, he's sort of getting back into that goal scoring form now, which we need him to be in. Yeah, I think I think it was actually this international break or one of the ones around it last season. I remember, I remember him scoring for Norway, and then yeah, yes, yeah, and uh, and obviously he had a great run of form towards the end of last season that we need him to get back to back to his best because uh, that that was what kept gave Bournemouth such a high finish. Really, I think it's all down to Josh King. Do you think Eddie Those will goals. stick with the? Um, King and Defoe partnership for now have you seen enough to say that's a good, good route to go I, I would say uh, they were pretty good against Leicester when I watched them because as I said King stretched defences and uh, Defoe's there to put them away in the ideal world but obviously that didn't happen against Leicester um, yes I think they, they complement each other pretty well but what they need to work on is their interplay because um, King, Kim kept drawing fouls from Maguire because he kept running basically running into the corner Yeah, and uh, Defoe was just there like as I mean he's a lethal finisher no doubt I mean he basically kept Sunderland up for a season and a half but he I, I mean I don't know it might be too much to ask of him because he's getting on but if he, he needs to link up well with the strike partner to like really push Bournemouth forward I think but if you think about when he was at Sunderland he didn't really play with anyone else he's always no. the lone striker so I don't know if Josh King should go sort of for like well, wider he has been playing in behind but sort of like to the right but I think Josh King's turned himself into a brilliant target man because yeah. of his, the strength he's got is, and the pace he's got is and brilliant pace, and he's, yeah. 
He reminds me a bit of like um, a Diego Costa sort of player from last, last season, where he was just able to hold up the ball and yeah. go past the strength and pace as well. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, I'm not that sure though what if Howe actually knows what his best team is because he's done quite a lot of experimenting, particularly especially in, on the flanks. He's switched from he's one week it's Pew and Fraser, then he's got Stanislas playing, yeah, and he's got Ibe playing back, on, the, yeah. on the wing, and it, yeah. But you don't know if in midfield if it's Arta or Sermon or Gosling, Gosling or yeah. who's who's best in midfield. I think after it might have been after the Everton game or one of the other games that Bournemouth lost, and Howe said. He felt he put out a good team, like his best team, to win the game, and he wasn't really sure why it didn't win. So I'm, I'm not sure if he knows, uh, you know, what the best method is here. But because I was surprised at the weekend when he started Pew, um, but he actually had, to be fair, he had a really good game. He has had games last season where he was best man on the pitch, particularly mm-hmm. against Middlesbrough and Leicester last season as well. He really did come into his own and, and turn the game around. Yeah, he's got quite an engine on him, I think. Mm-hmm. Like the, even like. Previous games of the season when Bournemouth haven't been too great, he's to me I've seen him like a standout player because he just it's just he works so hard for the team. But I don't know with King as well would it work? I mean, it's sort of like too many of the same players. I'm hoping to see Fraser come back into a bit of form because that's why he got dropped last weekend. Um, obviously, Stan has his back from injury, which is great, so it gives competition for places on out wide. But I also think he should probably steer away now from. Obviously, last year we had Ibe as a winger. I'm kind of thinking maybe we should steer away from that because I think we should use him as a substitute when he comes on in the middle of the park. He's a lot more influential. On what, you think it's a number 10 sort of role? Yeah, or? I think that's what he'll be using Ivan for now. When he sure. came on against Bryson in the cup, yeah. Yeah. it sort of just made the game so much more lively. Yeah, yeah. In the league. And he played, also played through the middle in the cup as well. I think it's a much better option, I think, for us. Yeah, straight away. Sorry. Even in Bournemouth's first win uh, against Brighton, Ibe's two assists came from him playing in the middle. So I think it's not a bad shout to chuck him in the middle instead of like out wide because... Mm. I mean, to be fair, he can't beat a man, but it's, it's his end product that's been lacking. But yeah. as he's shown over the past few weeks, his end product is improving if he gets the ball in the middle. So, yeah, I, I that's actually a pretty decent shower. I think we've got enough cover out wide, but it just seems finally the balance of the best team, obviously, with, with Stanislas, with Pew and with Fraser. But they both need... Stanislas has been playing quite well since he came back, but... Fraser's yet to hit the ground running for us really this season. Yeah, I think Max Gradle has been doing all right out on... He's out on loan, isn't he? Or was he, is he actually sold? Loan, yeah. yeah. I think he scored one or two goals, but um, Jordan Ibe, yeah, we need to see see more of him, and he needs to start performing performing from the start of the match. He gave some of the Brighton defence something a bit different to think about in that game because they, I think, they were more than happy to just sit back and try and defend yeah. the entire game. But to have that concentration for ninety minutes and then some more fresh legs to come on, do something a bit creative, it's so so much more. That's difficult. why was he coming early against Leicester because he was really starting to do that again, open up the defence, but he didn't come on quite in enough time. I felt. Um, elsewhere in international break this week um, Lisa Mousset scored the winner for the under-21s for France in a 2 on win over Montenegro but he has not scored for the Cherries yet in the first team um, is he going to be good enough to ever start getting contention for starting ahead of Defoe, King, Wilson and Defoe I mean I saw his goal it's a well taken one I mean it is a pretty good striker's finish so I think like, the potential is there I would say obviously it is under-21 level so not proper internationals but um, I think yeah, he's one of those players that uh, Eddie's like signed looking to the future mm-hmm. but considering we're in the Premier League the toughest game in the like, toughest league in the world and you're go- you're going to be facing top opposition day in day out he needs to step up to show that like his faith is being rewarded because he's been he's come on for a lot of games I- I'm surprised that he's had more game time than like, yeah I agree yeah. so many players I'm alright in thinking against Bryson in the cup he sort of played him a lot deeper was that? I think he was behind the phobia, I believe. I'm not sure. I thought it was just, it was just two strikers. strikers. He, had, he had some chances then. Now, I remember last year, clear as anything, his, his best chance to get a goal for us was against Mills, but we were already falling up in stoppage time, and it, he was two yards out and he based it over the bar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's no, it's no mean feat getting into the France squad, though, because they've. Yeah, he's got to be doing something yeah. right. Yeah. I, so I, they're I'm a surprised. very talented team. But he's not that, that had that many first team yeah. for us this no, season. I, I, I just can't see, at the moment, I can't see him ever getting ahead of these four strikers. Yeah, I think it's misplaced faith, same as you, Akshay, from, from Eddie Howe, to have the amount of time that he's had, even in spite of what he sort of hasn't been able to do and chances he's had and he hasn't scored. I don't know, I, I'm not a fan of him at all. But you see, he does one or two good flicks in the middle of the park, but not the job that he's really there to do for me. No, we shall see, but it's good to see him scoring anyway uh, elsewhere, so hopefully he can do it for Cherries very soon. Uh, Aaron Ransdale, we already talked about, and Conor Mahoney, both featured for England under-20s. They beat Italy 5-1 this week. And mm. um, Harry Arta could feature for Republic of Ireland tonight against Moldova. And Asmir Begovic and Nathan Ake both going to be in action for Bosnia and Holland, respectively, tomorrow night. 
so it's good for these players to get some run so out so many more internationals than we saw last season as oh, well yeah, yeah. Right. just can't get him in the England team right now though <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think we've got Ryan Frader for Scotland but I don't, again he wasn't used but hopefully we're going to get I think Brad Smith for Australia again wasn't used that was no it was only yeah they're, they're facing a tough task Australia by getting yeah. to the World Cup this season but yeah we'll take another quick break now then we'll come back and look ahead to the big game against Tom Hotspurs next Saturday the only talk show for AFC Bournemouth this is Cherry Chat welcome back to the show so next weekend big game for AFC Bournemouth away at Wembley to face Tottenham Hotspur so only, how many times do you reckon these two sides have faced each other in history? Five. You've been doing your research, haven't you? Yeah, no. you've got it spot on. Yeah, five. <laughs> Is it the first time Bournemouth that have ever played at Wembley? The new Wembley? It is at the new Wembley, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Another stat with that. <laughs> yeah, cheers for that, John. <laughs> yeah. When was that last, that, that, the first meeting between the two and Stephen? That you've um, five times. 1983. And that is 1957. Oh, um, Slightly far off. And Bournemouth actually won. Bournemouth won 3-1 in the FA Cup that day. That would have been, that would have been a great result if it happens. So. And then since then, uh, they didn't meet again until our first season back in the Premier League mm. in 2015-16. And didn't go so well then. We lost 5-1 at home and then lost 3-0 away. Last season we played amazingly well to get a 0-0 draw at home back in October of last year oh yeah year. I remember that one superb yeah. game really good performance we deserved to win it over, over two sides really yeah that was but great both sides playing so well and it's a really entertaining game to watch so that's positive and then of course we suffered a 4 0 defeat away back in April um, so mm. the odds are sat against us but however. Spurs Wembley gate record is not the best in the Premier League so I mean, how, how many fans are Bournemouth taking do you know this week? 3,000 3,000 yeah. yeah it's definitely a new experience for Bournemouth to try try themselves out at Wembley I mean it's yeah. it's unforgiving pitch <laughs> but what I've seen is they're playing Real Madrid on the Tuesday away from home mm-hmm. so I'm not sure if they're going to maybe rest a few players obviously a lot of their players have been on international duty so you'd expect them to be slightly more fatigued um, you would imagine the focus is going to be on the Madrid game yeah. as opposed to so, that yeah. but um, they might underestimate us so that's what the hope is well, they they destroyed uh, Huddersfield, I think it was last, yeah. didn't it? Was it was it four 0 in the end? Yeah, four nil hurricane, yeah, four nil. That that goal from uh, Ben Davies was just amazing team move. Sort of one touch passes in behind the defence. That's the what you've got about, to be worried about. The last about. pass, Merritt's in the foundling, that kind of ruined it because obviously it was off. I know it would have been but perfect. Apart from that, it would have yeah. been like that Arsenal goal, Walcott finish, you know, back yeah. <laughs> those years ago. Like yeah. Yeah, but with obviously Deli Ali, Harry Kane so many players that can do, cause Harrison, a lot of trouble. Yeah. I think Bournemouth maybe have just got to try and keep it down and counter attack when they can really. Yeah. I say we go there and set up quite defensively. Yeah. I think I don't. I don't know if we can. I don't think we can be that brave against them because they can just tear us apart. Because Huddersfield tried to be brave and had a few chances in the first 15 minutes, but just got punished every time their spares went forward. Mm, but they're quite a devastating team. Yeah. Um, if they're on it, but I mean, I think as you said, Bournemouth have to be sort of quite defensive. I'd expect sort of King and Ibe to play with Defoe just for that pace yeah, on the start. counter attack. You think he'll start Ibe? I think be quite a good idea just for the pace and the counter attack but it's going to be a tough game do we dare press them hard the pitch do what the so. do against United at Old Trafford no I, I suggest that if they do want to go defensive then Cook maybe won't start and you might see mm. Gosling or Sermon in, in the middle which yeah. wouldn't wouldn't be amazing but I <laughs> don't know um, yeah it's going to be tough because Spurs at Wembley for whatever reason I'm not sure what it is that why they're just not as good as they are away from home Harry Kane, he, he did score there for England last night, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Champions League are all right as well at home. Champions League's been fine, it's just been the Premier League. Yeah, League, against really. Dortmund, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah I think been... uh, one of the factors for like Spurs at home is that uh, they, they were used to, obviously, uh, initially they were used to a wider, uh, smaller pitch, a wide hard lane. So like they could easily do their pressing, which they're obviously most known for. And that was one of the factors. And then I think one of the factors is just like playing in a huge open atmosphere for like the Spurs used to like constant pressure oh, it's all about pressure isn't it winning the ball back getting it upfield and scoring uh, yeah I think that was one of the factors and I don't know whether Bournemouth have the the players really to do the kind of counter pressing which you suggested so yeah it's, it's going to be really tough I have no hopes I think <laughs> I think they <laughs> have no hopes <laughs> I think they do have the players because the, uh, our side is quite quick on the break but it's yeah. just whether Eddie Howe reverts to type or whether he changes it up because if you see against the Arsenal game it's the same tactics really so it's got to be something completely different we've also got Defoe who's got plenty of experience playing Wembley he'll be able to fill in the players what they need to know you know give them a 
maybe have to lead from the front as well. She could role model for the game. Yeah, countering is definitely probably the best way to go. But I don't know. I don't have a lot of confidence actually in 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 this game. To be honest, can't can't predict a Bournemouth. Think any chance of Wilson being on the bench, making a late late appearance, you know, getting behind, a bit of pace. I think it'd be quite rushed to throw him straight back in. Yeah, I'd more think a phobie will but be on phobie, the bench. You think he maybe he might even start him? I mean, it's a different option to be a hold up player rather than us trying to burst through the banks. Yeah. Don't know. Lots to think about for Eddie Howe this week. And of course, say we go into say we do lose this game, it's, well, again we're going to be still be on four points. It's very concerning times. Yeah, and at the moment, sort of the teams around us are sort of on the same same amount of points: four, five, six. Yeah. So a defeat, and if they win, so it's going to be the, the gap yeah. widens. Yeah, but that will be then followed by Stoke and uh, sorry, Stoke and Middlesbrough. I think November is probably the most uh, winnable looking month yeah. of the season. Newcastle, Huddersfield, Swansea, and, and Burnley. Must win games shouldn't be there, dropping yeah. too many points in November but you need to get 9 points from 12 in that absolutely yeah, uh, yeah just got to try and get anything they can from, from Wembley anything That's against Spurs team. now or and Chelsea at home at the end of the month is going to be a, a massive bonus it's going to be a tough running tough ask but let's get some score predictions then what do you reckon for the Spurs game Stephen 2-0 to Tottenham I think <laughs> ok 2-1 to, to Spurs 3-0 to, to Spurs I'm going to be more positive and I'm going to go with we're going to get a one all draw out of it oh, ever the optimist <laughs> yeah always, has, always got to end on a, a positive note for score prediction performance <laughs> well we did it at home against them last season for I think nil, we need nil. an early goal that's what's the key um, just to sort of you know unnerve them a bit because if if we go sort of 2-0 down it's going to be a long it's way back it's been scoring which has been the problem that's the thing mm. yeah I mean we, we, we were very good defensively against Leicester that was our first clean sheet in the league this season Um but I think because of how we played against at home last season we'll have confidence from that and I think we could potentially hold them out we've had some good results away from uh, big teams before you just, think that we've gone to Anfield and got a result yeah they've just got to exploit it if and when Tottenham's defence fall to sleep a la- lack of concentration like when Josh King picked up the ball against Everton just ran past one player pretty much shot from outside the box that's a goal from nowhere really yeah. um, I mean also like as I said they might have one eye on the Real Madrid game so the likes of maybe Deli Ali may drop to the bench so they might not start hopefully. Ali's suspended for that that's the last game yeah. suspended, suspended so sorry. Ericsson will be the one who will drop out because Ericsson usually has to fill Ali's role so mm. Ericsson probably won't start yeah, yeah so you know like normal teams they rest them before they go to Real Madrid unlike Liverpool when they went to Real Madrid and rested <laughs> them Fabio Barini up front yeah. <laughs> Gerard on the bench now we, we shall see but I'm going to be optimistic about it I mean obviously the 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 thing to is the players aren't going to be as scared of this challenge they're not going to be scared of playing Spurs at Wembley they, they've experienced enough now it's their third season in the Premier League yeah they've gone to Stamford Bridge and beaten Chelsea before and beaten United at home got you know. big results against big teams so yeah no, they're not going to be afraid whatsoever about this, about this task especially when you look at Spurs record in the Premier League as well they get a bit nervous you know say say we come into like 70th minute and you know it's and Spurs aren't winning the game it's going to be the fans getting on the back to be pressure because we still can't get this league win at home and you know that will probably play into our hands yeah, I suppose that's probably when you want to play these teams like when West Ham moved into their stadium and struggled at the start you want to go and play them at the start well I say that and Bournemouth went there and lost but, um, <laughs> well, but only one nil in the last minute of the game of Antonio yeah. though we did hold them before that so. yeah so maybe I don't know maybe rather now than at the end of the season when they've got used to it a bit more but time will tell ok so we'll be back again next Friday to discuss uh, more more news basically about what's going on in the week obviously we won't be a game to discuss yet because obviously we, the next game will be Spurs but um, yeah we'll look into it we'll review it again we'll be back on Friday thanks to Stephen John and Akshay for joining thank me you. Hope you enjoyed it. thank you very much thank you and we'll see you again next week <laughs>